JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week February the 14th until February uh, the 18th. I am Haralambos Bissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic uh, releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we don't have any central bank decisions on this week's agenda, but we do get the minutes from the latest RBA and FOMC gatherings with investors eager, uh, perhaps eager to get more clues with regards to each bank's future plans. As for the data, the most important ones may be the UK and Canada CPIs for January, as well as Australia's employment report for the same month. Now, let's take things from the beginning. Today, the calendar appears very light in terms of data. As there are no top tier uh, releases on uh, on the agenda, however, we will get to hear once again from ECB President Christine Lagarde, remarks of whom could uh, well uh, uh, could well affect expectations around ECB monetary policy. Remember that at the press conference uh, following the latest ECB decision, Lagarde said that inflation uh, remained elevated for longer than previously thought and that the economy was hurt less than anticipated by the, by the pandemic. She also added that the March and June meetings would be essential for evaluating uh, their guidance, which means that they could, after all, decide to lift uh, rates this year. Last week, though, she pushed against, ex against expectations over a summer rate increase by saying that there were no signs that uh, measurable monetary policy tightening would be required while ECB member class notes said that a hike could be delivered during the fourth quarter. Therefore, clearer hints that they are unlikely to touch the hike button during the summer, during the summer months could result in a further pullback in the euro. Now, although we don't have any other major uh, events on the agenda, we will stay extra careful as tensions in Ukraine have intensified with the White House warning on Friday that um, a Russian attack could begin any day. A Russian invasion could result in further uh, risk aversion, which means further retreat in equities and uh, stronger safe havens. Now, on Tuesday, tomorrow, during the Asian uh, session, we get the minutes from the latest uh, RBA gathering. At that meeting, officials decided to keep interest rates untouched at 0.10% and announced uh, the end of their quantitative easing purchases, as was broadly expected. However, in the statement accompanying the decision, it was noted that while inflation has picked up, it is too early to conclude that it is sustainably within the target band and that they will not increase the cash rate until that happens. However, market participants remain convinced that the bank will hike to 0.25% uh, around May or, or June, while they see the official cash rate hitting, uh, excuse me, surpassing 1.25% by the end of uh, the year. Thus, in order to scale back those bets, they may need clearer hints that the RBA is unlikely to touch the hike button soon. If they find such, uh, such clues in the minutes, the Aussie could slide, but everything could change again on Thursday when we get uh, when we get the uh, we, when we get Australia's employment report. Now, from Japan, we get the preliminary GDP for the fourth quarter, with the forecast pointing to a 1.4% quarter-over-quarter rebound after a 0.9% contraction in the third quarter. This will be pleasant news for Bank of Japan policymakers, but with inflation expected to stay well below 2%, we don't expect them to be tempted uh, to alter their ultra-loose monetary policy. 
Japan's national CPIs are due to be released on Friday. Now, during the early European session, the UK releases its jobs data for December. Uh, tomorrow during the early European session. Uh, the unemployment rate is expected to have held steady at 4.1%, uh, while there is no forecast for the, for the employment change. Average weekly earnings, both including and excluding bonuses, are forecast to have slowed uh, somewhat, which could be a sign that inflation may start uh, uh, may start um, uh, slowing down as well soon, but we prefer uh, to focus more on the actual inflation data for the month of January, which are released on Wednesday. From Germany, from Germany, we have the ZW survey for February. The current conditions index is expected to have risen to minus 7 from minus 10.2, while the economic sentiment one is forecast to have inched up to 53.5 from 51.7. As for the Eurozone as a whole, we get the second estimate of GDP and the employment change for the fourth quarter. The second GDP estimate is expected to confirm its preliminary print, while no forecast is available for the employment change. Now, on Wednesday during the Asian session, China releases its CPI and PPI rates for January, with the former expected to have declined to 1% from 1.5% year over year, and the latter to have slid to 9.4% from 10.3%. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. We get more CPIs for January later during the early European session, this time from the UK. The headline rate is forecast to have held steady at 5.4%, while the core one is anticipated to have inched up to 4.3% from 4.2%. At the prior meeting, the Bank of England decided to lift interest rates by 25 basis points to 0.50% via a 5-4 uh, to four vote, with the four dissenters calling for a 50 basis points hike. Now, given that only one member needs to be convinced uh, that, a, that a double hike may be appropriate at the next gathering, these CPI numbers may attract special attention. If indeed inflation stays elevated or even accelerates further, market participants could add to bets over a double hike at the bank's upcoming gathering, something that could support the British pound. Now, Canada's CPIs for January are also on Wednesday's agenda. The headline CPI is expected to stay at 4.8% year over year, while the core one to have slid to 3.5% from 4%. At its latest gathering, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates untouched at 0.25% uh, at a time when the financial community was expecting a hike. In the statement accompanying the decision, it was noted that the Council expects rates to increase and that the overall economic slug is now absorbed, which means that they are more likely to hit, to hit the hike button in March. However, they once again noted that the Omicron coronavirus variant is weighing on activity with Governor McLean adding that hikes will not be automatic. They will take decisions at each meeting, he added. So, with all that in mind, we don't expect uh, slowing core inflation to derail officials from pushing the, uh, the hike button in, uh, in March. But it could prompt market participants to scale back their bets with regards to upcoming liftoffs. Something like that could weigh on the Canadian dollar. Now from the US, we have the US retail sales for January and the minutes from the latest FOMC in gathering. Both headline and core retail sales are forecast to have rebounded in January, which could add credence to market, to market expectations with regards to the Fed's future course of action but we don't believe that we will get a major market reaction as participants may stay cautious in anticipation of uh, the FOMC minutes. Now, the message we got from, the, from that meeting, from the latest meeting, was that the hike uh, is coming in March and that there is a decent likelihood for more liftoffs this year than the December dot plot suggested. Now, following a strong employment report and accelerating inflation in the aftermath of uh, the gathering, Market participants are fully pricing uh, in around uh, around six quarter point uh, hikes uh, by the end of uh, the year. Thus, we will scan the minutes for clues as to whether this number is logical or not. Anything confirming that the Fed will that the Fed is willing to proceed uh, as aggressive as the current market pricing suggests 
could support the US dollar and perhaps result in further trading equities. The opposite could be possible if uh, the minutes reveal a more uh, cautious picture than, than Fed Chair Powell presented at the conference, um, at the press conference following, uh, following the decision. Now, on Thursday, the only release worth mentioning may be Australia's employment report for January. The unemployment rate is expected to have held steady at 4.2%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has lost 15,000 jobs after adding 64.8,000 in December. Now, conditional upon the RBA minutes revealing a cautious picture on Tuesday, a soft employment report could eventually convince investors to scale back their uh, interest rate hike bets, something that could result in a slide in the Australian dollar. And now, finally, on Friday, during the agent session, as we already noted, we get Japan CPIs for January. No forecast is available for the headline rate, while the core one is anticipated to have slid to 0.3% from 0.5%. We don't believe that this data will move again, and as they will just confirm that the Bank of Japan will stay ultra loose uh, for longer, uh, given that uh, those numbers are still well below the bank's objective of 2%. Now, later in the day, we have retail sales data from uh, the UK and Canada for the months of January and December, respectively. In the UK, headline uh, sales are forecast to have rebounded 0.6% month over month after sliding 3.7%, while core sales are forecast to have slid 0.5% month over month after falling 3.6%. In Canada, both the headline and core rates are forecast to have declined to minus 2.1% and minus 2.3% month over month from 0.7 and 1.1% respectively. So uh, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and, uh, and, uh, and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking uh, forward seeing you here again next Monday. Uh, uh, excuse me, at this point I will have to let you know that there will not be a weekly Market Outlook webinar next Monday, so uh, next one will be for, uh, for the 28th. So, if you are interested in a more detailed uh, and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around, uh, at around uh, 9 a.m. Uh, GMT. So, goodbye and have a great rest of uh, the week. JFT, just fair and direct.